Lefty is probably looking down at us right now saying, how could you guys pick the rainiest day in the whole year, the whole calendar year to have an outside school? You should know better, it's Florida and it's hurricane season. I didn't know it was monsoon season. Yeah, it's always, <laughs> it's always monsoon no. season. I think when we when we actually started promoting the school, it was it was your idea, and don't say I never said that. No, I but, did say that. Okay, <coughs> no, it was your idea to say that Flip, <coughs> Brian, Blaine, and Lefty might show up. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lefty might show yeah. up, and Flip said, "No, just say it." Just say well, it the left. day's not over yet. Let, the day's not over yet, right, so right. It could happen. Well, it's, I mean, how many more times in our lives are we going to be uh, doing what we did this weekend with three people that knew Lefty, that called Lefty a friend? Uh, clearly much more so Flip and Blaine, but I considered Lefty a friend and he was a huge help to me in my early career. Heck, he introduced me to you. He gave me your fax number. That's <laughs> He gave me my fax machine. I know. That's why he gave me your fax number, because he wanted people to fax you. Yes. Yeah. That's right. I, I told Lefty no one. He gave me the fax machine. I wanted your phone number, but he said, no, 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 just fax him. He'll get right back to you. <laughs> I was sitting by the machine waiting for someone to fax me. I'm sure you were. <laughs> I can vouch for the fact that you were not. Yeah. Did, did I ever <laughs> tell not. you the story, of the fax machine story that's, that's, I mean, this is my best Lefty story, maybe. He gives me this fax machine. He goes, I was guiding. He goes, Flip, you have, there's this new kind of machine. It's a new thing, brand new. It's called faxing. You have a fax machine and people can send you these faxes and he's explaining to me how it works. And I go, Lefty, what am I going to do? Put it in the bait well of my skiff? What am I going to, I don't need a fax. He goes, you do, you need a fax machine because we're going into the future. And you know how Lefty was. He yeah, was right. so techno-penile. So he goes, <clears throat> so I I was uh, I was on my way to Michigan to do an appearance at a fly club in Michigan. I get on the plane, and you know how when you get on the plane, you you get in your seat and you're sitting there, and other people are boarding, and you see someone coming down the aisle that's like very unpleasant, and you go, God, I hope they don't sit next to me. You know, I had all these people going, God, I hope they don't sit next to me. Then all of a sudden, this girl comes walking down the thing in tight jeans and a tight little black shirt and has white writing on it. And as she gets closer, I see that the writing says, you cannot be first, but you could be next. <laughs> so I go, man, she could sit next to me. But of course she didn't, she, she yeah. kept going. So when I get to the I get to the club and I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I have no idea. I was always whenever I had to do something like that, I never could figure out a plan or anything and I just would wait until I stood up in front of the group and then just see what came into my mind and so I did that. And when I stood up, I said, "You know, Lefty insisted that I have a fax machine." I said and I I, I have it, it's installed. He sent a guy from Maryland to help me hook up a fax machine. So I said, and then I got on the plane to come up here and talk to you guys. I said, and then this girl walked down the thing and had the t-shirt and I went, you right. cannot be first, but you could be next. I said, and it occurs to me that I have never received a fax on my fax machine the lefty gave me, so you can be first yeah. if you here's my fax number and so i gave my fax number to the club hoping that somebody and sure enough when i got home there were all these faxes from yeah. from all the members of the club and i go all right i got a fax machine well it, it <laughs> was even it was even funny that uh, i remember because uh, i had lefty's phone number and and I, I used to call him occasionally um and i remember calling him saying lefty i, I, I I'm faxing Flip, and he's not getting back to me. And he said, just keep faxing it. Just keep faxing <laughs> I probably didn't know how at that point. Right, right. I mean, Blaine Lefty was, 
a huge influence on your career in, in, in a similar fashion and in a similar time to, to myself, in, in basically in the 90s, probably in the 2000s. Yeah, but uh, I've always called him the godfather. You know, whatever he said went in the industry, in my opinion. And uh, one of the best examples of that, I was in Harker's Island, um, late 90s, and I'd come up with the gummy minnow. Nobody had seen it before. I took it down there knowing that that big party that, that they had down there was going to be a good opportunity, especially because I knew Popovics was going to be there. Mm -hmm. And he always uh, was tying outside the box with the surf candies and all that stuff. So long story short, short I, I showed him the gummies. I asked him what he thought. Are they flies or not? He said, absolutely. He said, hold on. I'm like, all right. So I got something to eat. It was a nice barbecue. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. About him. Don't worry about him. No, he won't hurt you. Promise. <laughs> won't hurt me. All no, right. no promise. So anyway, we uh, I'm sitting there. I got my barbecue. I'm eating, I'm waiting. It's a big party outside. You got the marsh behind us. Sun setting. It starts getting dark. Bob's he comes back about ten minutes later and he goes, "Follow me." So we go through this big crowd. It's probably a hundred people there. There's a big spotlight in the backyard, and in the middle of it, it's like the the, the Red Sea opens up. And right in the middle of it's Lefty Cray. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. And, and Bob goes, Lefty wants to talk to you. And I'm like, amazing. <laughs> so he's got, my, he's got a handful of my flies. Uh -huh. And he goes, this is like, he goes, these are amazing. How, how do they work? And I'm like, you know what, Lefty, I've literally never tried them before. And that's like, I brought them down here for you all to see, to see if you guys thought they were flies or not. Mm -hmm. He goes, Al, absolutely they're flies. He goes, I've been working with IGFA for years. Tell me how you tied them. How did you do this? And I explained it to him. He goes, this is going to be like rolling a wine bottle in the jail cell. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, <laughs> he goes, do you mind? If, and, and just like Lefty, you know, as humble as he was, he asked me, he goes, do you mind if I keep a few? I'm like, you can have them all. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, so, you know, there was a lot of people there. And, and you know, I mean, it was like... Yeah. You can have evening. all of these flies and whatever I have in my underpants. You can yeah, have exactly. those too. You can have it all. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just he goes, Unfortunately I'm leaving in the morning because I have some work I have to fly somewhere to do an event that gives but I would love to have these. And I'm like, You're more than welcome to have them. And I knew it was preemptive. I knew going into that weekend this that would be a great opportunity to kind of highlight this fly or get it rejected because Back then, that was the who's who of fly fishing that would go to it. Yeah. And, you know, it was Tom Earnhardt put the party on. And, um, you know, Fly Fisherman Magazine was there, Outdoor Life, Build and Stream, uh, Jerry Seam would be there from Sage, uh, you name it, reps. So it was an opportunity for me to see if this was, if I was onto something or if it was, I needed to leave it alone. Because it was literally 100%, 100% outside the box. Yes. Yeah. So I went on my way, That's a, it was a Friday night, or Saturday night, I think it was a Saturday night. Um, so the next day I was going fishing, Sarah Gardner and Brian Horsley, I gave them a bunch of, bunch of them because they were prominent guides there. Um, and before we got out on the water, we're, I'm hearing this radio static about everybody's catching these fly, catching these albies on these, these new flies from Brian and Sarah. And uh, Brian goes, yeah, they go like, what are you catching these flies on? And Brian's like, Oh, I'm catching on Blaine's condom fly. <laughs> so, so it's plastic. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's great. Here we go. But I was excited because they worked. You know, yeah. I knew I knew they, they matched profile, silhouette, whatever. But uh, the, the interesting thing that happened, and this was before cell phones. So I was staying in Moorhead City at a hotel. And I had a message that next day um, after I got back off the water from my wife to give me a call. So I called her and she goes, uh, Blaine, I got a message from the fly czar from uh, Umpqua Feather Merchants. Um, his name was Bruce Olson. Yep. I remember and he said, Bruce, yeah. Bruce wants you to call him immediately. So I called him, I was like, hi Bruce, it's Blaine. I, he goes, Blaine, I got a phone call from Lefty. And he said, I have 100% have to have this new fly of yours. And he goes, normally we go through this process of looking at it, analyzing it, going through a committee to decide if, if we're gonna keep a fly or take a fly or whatever. He goes, I want you to know, we want, what I wanna know first off, how many different types of bait fish can you emulate with this fly? I was like, well, I can do glass minnows, I can do 
sand eels. I can do little baby bunker. He goes, okay, I want six colors. I want three sizes of each, and I want them as soon as you can get them to us. It's a done deal. That's the power of the lefty. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, normally, you have to go through committees. <coughs> you have to go through. Oh, he's. But steps, you know, it, it wasn't just the, the the amazing thing. Is not so much the power of lefty because certainly there was enormous power and influence within the industry. What was amazing beyond that was his willingness to do this for somebody that he just that moment met. Yep. But he was such an incredible judge of character. I always felt this about Lefty. There was something in you that that drew Lefty, or he never would have done that. He just would have said, nice fly, maybe it's a fly, maybe it's not a fly, it's plastic, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. But he could have just as easily done that, not gotten involved, not made the phone call, not made the commitment, but it was his nature to help and to and to teach and to um, mentor. It was just in him to do that. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's that's my story, which I know both of you have heard this story before. But I believe it was the first time I was with Lefty. Actually, I met him at a, a local trout club in uh, Central Ohio. They had hired him to come and do programs. This was like. I think it was like 89 or 90, 1990 maybe. And he, he came and did these programs for this trout club and did the whole casting thing. And I met him, and that's actually when I got his phone number. And um, I started calling him, eventually got him to Mad River Outfitters. And I believe it was the first time that he was at Mad River Outfitters. But I took him carp fishing at the place where you eventually yeah. wound up after yeah. 76 faxes. <laughs> um, you, you I'm sorry if I never said I'm sorry. You, you, uh, let me apologize. I, I, I'm, no, I apologize. No, no. Um, it all turned out pretty well. It did. Yeah. So uh, I took Lefty Carfish, and then that's when he said, Brian, this is just beautiful place and uh, carp everywhere. And he said, Flip has got to film a show here. And that's when he gave me your fax number. He said, start fax and flip, flip. I'll tell him about it. He's got to come here and film this carp stuff that you guys are doing. Well, anyway, that first day I had him out fishing, um, he was on the, on the front of the boat, on the bow of the boat, and I was running the trolling motor, as, as we used to do. And, and Lefty, he missed a couple of shots. I mean, you remember, that was a strange game where you had to make the carp hear the fly hit the water. Yeah, to go plunk. Yeah, and even Flip was like, wow, this is... In that Walker's K we did, you said this is so counterintuitive. Counterintuitive. Yeah. I never want the fish to hear the presentation. Well, Lefty missed a couple of shots. Whether he missed a couple of shots or was just pretending, I don't know. But Lefty, and I was probably 25, 26 years old at the time, Lefty said, turned around and he said, Brian, he said, I want to watch you do this. I want to yes. watch you do this so that I can, I, I can do better. But get up here and show me how to do this. And I was 25, 26, same thing. He knew, exact, he knew exactly what to do. He could make the shot. He did that for me. Yeah. He did that to mentor me. And, and, and I, uh, I felt at the time that he, he saw this really cool fly shop, even at that time uh, in the early to mid-90s. And he said, you know, I want to I want to support this kid. I want to help this kid. So he let me get on the front of, front of the boat. I taught Lefty how to catch carp on mulberries. And I was superstar of the world. I mean, that probably, probably changed my life right there. Just that moment of Lefty wants yeah. me to fish. Yeah. Lefty wants me to show him something. I will always look back at that as one of the most generous moments that I've ever experienced in, in angling. Yeah. And then he continued to touch my life, and we had him back to the shop several times. Every knot I know, the blood knot, the bimini, every knot I know, Lefty showed me tricks, and those are the same tricks that I teach. And th let me tell you something. There isn't a class or a clinic or a school go by that I don't reference Lefty and bring up his name. 
but w here's an idea, and this is thanks to Lily Renzetti at the Renzetti Company. But an idea that's been tossed around is a, call it a industry wide Lefty Cray Day. What a great idea. And it, let's say it's the first Saturday in December. This was Lily's idea? Lily's, Lily's idea. Yes, yeah, she, she, she loved Lefty. She did. What a great idea. First Saturday of December, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever. And we it's all great idea. celebrate it, and it's a it's a holiday, and we all promote it. We have events. We have we offer free casting lessons. We offer whatever it is, refreshments, and we raise some money for some sort of charity for the Lefty Cray Foundation or the uh, Friends of Lefty dot org or what whatever that stuff is out there or the scholarship that they now have uh, in Lefty's name. Uh, or we donate it to whatever. But um, I think it's a really, really neat idea, and I think if uh, Lily could certainly spearhead that amongst the dealers of Renzetti, and um, I just think it, we've got to keep his legacy going. We've got to uh, continually honor, and we've got to somehow uh, make it known to m the newcomers in the sport what he meant to the sport, and I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here without Lefty and, and you. I mean, you've helped me a lot along the way, but Lefty helped all three of us more than we could possibly, possibly express. Well, let's do whatever we, let's, let's agree to do whatever we have to do to make this come to fruition. I think it's a great idea. I think it's really and, neat. And um, uh, I like the idea that that Lily is willing to to spearhead this thing. She is incredible. She's a go-getter. When oh my God, uh, she is an organizer. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. So, um, I I mean, it's the perfect storm. Let's do it. Yeah. So, Sean, you're certainly <laughs> another friend in the circle that uh, was greatly influenced by Lefty Cray. Sorry. And uh, I mean, you started hanging out with Lefty when you were well, a toddler, maybe three, four years old. Right. Yep. Lefty, uh. among other guys like Mel Krieger, I mean, Tom McLean, um, George Hummel, Billy Pate. Right. Uh, all of the great names. I kind of grew up on them. I knew them all coming fishing with my dad, just calling them Uncle Lefty, Uncle George, right. Uncle Billy, you know. Well, Ted Lefty, Williams. Lefty had a. Lefty had a pretty big uh, influence uh, in, in helping your dad start the club. Well, certainly through his writing, he was very instrumental in, um, you know, most of his articles. He would mention, you know, particularly my mom's cooking <laughs> and my dad, Austin, guiding here in the West Coast of Andres. He was one of the first to start exploring mm -hmm. um, fishing, flats fishing on, on the West Coast of Andros. And so, you know, you had a combination of a really great guide and a guy who through his writing was very creative of, you know, creating this imagination of a perfect world of flats fishing. He was very dynamic in, in mm -hmm. doing just that, you yeah. know? Yes. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have ever come to the Andros Island Bonefish Club if it weren't for Lefty. Yep. Um, it was 1996 or 97. And I was, uh, I, I had been hosting some trips, but looking to expand. I wanted to get into saltwater. And I said, Lefty, I said, where do I take my clients for the best bone fishing in the world? And without hesitation, yep. he said, call Rupert Leiden. No doubt. He wrote in one of his articles, if he had one day left to fish, it would be at the Anders Island Bonefish Club with my dad. You know, Doing just this. He loved it. He loved it. I, I may wind up saying the same thing. <laughs> no so uh, you, you had a story, uh, maybe a little story, and it maybe involved Ted Williams? Yeah, the, the great, um, late, well, the late Ted Williams. Uh, that's who taught me how to fly fish, by the way. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, we had a docking area just out from where the cottages are, and he was casting off the platform there. And um, I asked him, well, what are you doing? That was, you know, quite acquainted with seeing the conventional tackle, the spinning gear and... And of course, growing up, we just used a lot of hand lining mm -hmm. where you, you know, just toss the line and feel for, wait for a, a nibble. Um, but having seen him just, you know, he's, at the time, I, I call it stroking this, this rod or this thing. Uh -huh. 
and I asked him, you know, what are you doing? He's like, Sonny, this is called fly fishing. What, what, do you want to learn? And sure, you know, there was, this was like after the duration they came from fishing that afternoon, so it was late evening. And um, he showed me how to grip the rod and he's giving me these abstract, you know, sudden abrupt stops. And you can see the line catapulting all, all by itself. And says, yeah, this is how you do it. And sure enough, um, my dad yelled, hey, your drink's mixed, what are you doing? So he went, he left the rod with me. I'm casting the rod, I mean, from about five to six o'clock till about nine that night. I'm, <laughs> I'm just casting, casting. And he came back from the lodge after having dinner and I'm still on the deck casting. And he says to me, you know what? I'm going to leave you this rod tomorrow. And if you can show me, you can cast 60 feet of line. I'm going to give you a rod. <laughs> and there was Tom McLean there at the time. It mm -hmm. was Lefty. It was Billy Pate. It was Ted Williams. Um, there's like four or five other guys there at the time. And um, sure enough, they went out that day because the next day was actually a Saturday. And my mom, she, you know, we, we had our daily chores during the weekends. Weekends at the lodge, you know, mm -hmm. after, you know, there was no school day. So um, I did all my chores very early. All that day I was practicing inside the walk, the catwalk, just throwing this line, throwing this line all day long. So sure enough, when they came back at about 3, 30, 4 o'clock, I was there to, to receive them. And I pulled them away from my dad. They were having conversations. I said, I'm ready to share. I can cast. So he and I, we walked over the to where the cat mark is, just off in front of the, the um, cottages there. And I made two false casts, and I shot the thing like 70, 80 feet. He's like, holy shit. <laughs> so he hollered over by the bar, he said, guys, come here, come here, come here. He says, do that again. And I did it again. So he looks up at Lefty and he says, Lefty, what do you think, what do you think? Lefty says, give the kid the <laughs> rod, give the kid the <laughs> Rod, because <laughs> he was telling him about it. He says, "I'm going to yeah. give this kid the rod yeah. <laughs> if he shows me, give me 60 feet." And now it's the first fly rod I ever owned. Nice, given to me by Ted Williams. Yeah, yeah. And, and ever and, since, I just and encouraged by Lefty. Yes, no doubt, no doubt. Well, I, I know that Lefty was was a big fan of yours. I mean, certainly, certainly, he and certainly I talked was. a lot about you over the yeah. years, yeah. and uh, what what a great friend you were to to both of us. And I, I know he was like a a grandfather to no you. No doubt, man. He and my uh, dad were pretty tight. I, yes, I mean. You know, off and on, my dad would call him about certain things. And, you know, being that it was back then, owning a fishing lodge was kind of new. So him being a very well-traveled individual and, and an author who would write certain articles about certain um, destinations mm -hmm. and certain types of fishing, he would say to my dad, just tweak this or tweak that, you know. And, and that's how my mom and my dad started the administration of, you know, running and the, the operations of the lodge and that's how it all came together you know mm -hmm. that's it was a it was a it was a huge dynamic yeah yes well that's pretty cool man uh tons and tons of lefty lefty stories no doubt and sean and i can both vouch uh that in all the times that we spent with lefty uh he would take a nap every day oh yes oh, i can tell you that every day he goes yep. out fishing <laughs> It's like Sunny Pocket, if you want to fish, fish, but I'm going to sleep for about a half hour to an hour. Yeah. That was his daily routine. <laughs> no, he would ask me for, the, we'd be teaching a class or something, and he'd ask for the keys to my car, and uh, he would go over to the car and uh, lean the passenger seat back. We'll take and a I, nap, huh? I'd walk by and Lefty was in there sleeping. Yep, so. yep, yep. <laughs> well, special memories, man, special no doubt, stories, no and, uh, you know, it's really, uh, we got to keep those people alive in Certainly. our memories, and, and we have to teach uh, younger people and people that that didn't know Lefty or, or even didn't know who he was, don't know who he was. We got to keep that alive. No and, doubt, uh, man. And the legacy speaks for itself because even though he's passed and gone, he has touched so many people in many different ways. And his inspiration to this industry is far more pronounced than it could ever be. Yeah. You know, his his teaching, his you know, stories, you know, his demonstrations. Well, and his willingness it's, to, yeah, to bring, bring people, people in, in no yeah, doubt. Yeah. He's been very instrumental in the development of my, um, you know, tactics and career in the fly fishing mm -hmm. industry. And knowing him on a personal level, it just even added more to me being recognized in the industry as a result of it because right. of his tenure. Yeah. You know, and I, I give all hats and appreciations to 
lefty for doing just that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, I sure owe him a lot as well. So, yes. well, you know what? Let's go catch a bonefish for lefty. Let's do it, man. Yep. Let's do it. Well, friends, thanks as always for watching. Uh, really, pretty special. Not every day you get to, you get to sit on a back porch of flip pallet with Blaine chocolate. Um, so pretty special, and and not that often that you get three friends of Lefty who had such an influence on the career together in the same space. Um, and so we felt we had to talk about Lefty. So anyways, we appreciate you watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. We've got a lot of great fly fishing content coming your way and chances are you'll probably see these two guys.